Hi everyone and welcome to Neuros IQ. I'm Sofia and I'm a PhD candidate in Dr. Fabius' Diamandis lab. Today I'm going to give you a sneak peek in our recent paper that came out earlier this week in Soul Reports. This project is about how we originally define proteomic patterns of human cerebral tissue and organoids and how this analysis helped us reveal conserved molecular modules of neurodevelopment. I'm going to start with a small introduction in neurogenesis, which is one of the earliest stages of neurodevelopment. So what's really happening during these early steps? As you can see in the schematic, during human brain development, radial glial cells generate intermediate progenitor cells and neuroblasts that ultimately give rise to mature neurons. These neurons use radial glial fibers to migrate to the cortical plate. During these processes, we have cell type specific markers that help us follow these early steps in different model systems. While a lot of research has been done to establish the major conserved pathways of brain development, there are still a lot of questions that haven't been answered, and the main reason is that there is no system that we can fully use to study the human brain development. The advent of cerebral organoids has garnered new avenues for investigation into human brain evolution, function, development, and disease. These three-dimensional, in vitro-derived structures are generated from pluripotent stem cells and undergo some level of self-organization that mimic not only the diversity of neuronal cell types, but also the structure and cellular interactions of the brain tissue. In the lab, we use human embryonic stem cells that we sit in 96 well plates so they can form what we call an embryoid body. These structures are grown in an undirected manner without the use of growth factors and are embedded in matrizol. This is used as an artificial scaffold so they can eventually grow in what we later call a cerebral organoid. Various very single cell RNA sequencing studies have provided insight into transcriptional differences across different cell types found within the organoids. There is great potential to utilize proteomic workflows within the organoid system and explore mechanisms of human brain development. More specifically, we believe that proteomic workflows offer the opportunity to study not only intrinsic, but also extrinsic signals. But today, I'm only going to focus on the applications that involve the investigation of the cellular heterogeneity of the cerebral organoids. For this project, we took advantage of two genetically engineered human embryonic stem cell lines designed with fluorescent tags on SOX2, a progenitor marker, and DCX, an immature neuronal marker, in order to isolate both live progenitors and neurons. We decided to isolate these two populations as SOX2 closely mirrors the subventricular precursor zones in human brain, whereas the DCX population is representative of the neuronal and rich cortical brain regions of the developing brain. In short, we use two cell tag lines to grow cerebral organoids. In three different time points, we took organoids out of culture and proceeded with fluorescent activated cell sorting that allowed enrichment prior to profiling. At the same time, we utilized the human fetal tissue proteomic dataset, and all these samples were prepared for liquid chromatography tandem mass spectrometry based proteomics. Bioinformatic pipeline, including differential expression matrix analysis, gene enrichment analysis and weighted gene correlation network analysis were carried out to find similarities. To provide a proof of concept of the generated resource, validation experiments and clinical cohorts were used to highlight phenotypic changes, following defects in candidate protein variable 2. Starting with our organoid proteomic dataset, we can see on the left a multidimensional scaling of all proteins using principal component analysis of sorted SOX2 positive and DCX positive cell populations derived from cerebral organoids. On the right side, we can see the unsupervised clustering showing the person correlation coefficient between proteomic signatures of sorted organoid samples. In both figures, it's demonstrated how these two subpopulations have distinct molecular signatures. Genset enrichment analysis revealed that proteins enriched in SOX2 positive population, as we can see in the left side of the volcano plot, were associated with terms related to DNA replication and cell cycle pathways, whereas protein enriched in the DCX positive population, as shown in the right side of the volcano plot, 
were involved in neural differentiation related pathways, including action development and neural projection guidance. While the protein profiles of SOX2 positive cells were relatively stable across the various time points, numerous proteins were found to temporarily change in abandonment within the DCX positive cell compartment, as you can see in the heat map. So we can summarize and say that our workflow can be used as a tool to monitor temporarily dynamic changes in cell type specific neurodevelopmental proteins. While many parallels between the organoids and human neurobiology have been emphasized, it is also likely that many molecular processes occurring within the organoids may not be relevant to the true in vivo environment. To help prioritize the most pertinent proteomic differences between the precursor and more committed neuronal cell organoid populations, we generated a complementary anatomically defined proteomic dataset in human fetal brain tissue. Specifically, we profiled nine different regions from eight histopathologically normal human fetal brains from the early second trimester. Our analysis allowed many proteins to be spatially resolved and assigned to biologically distant brain regions that are paralleled by the profiles of the organoid-derived cell types used in our analysis. By doing a principal component analysis between our two datasets, we observed that the first component separated samples by dataset, while principal component two and three separated the filled brain regions into neural progenitor regions and neuronal regions. In these dimensions, we saw that the organoids derived SOX2 positive and DCX positive populations were clustering amongst the fetal progenitors and neuronal regions respectively. To more specifically characterize protein level similarities between the organoids and the fetal brain regions, we perform WGCNA. This analysis groups highly correlated proteins into network modules. In total, we identified 13 gene modules of the fetal samples, three of which were also significantly preserved in cerebral organoids. So I'm going to briefly explain some of the characteristics of these modules. The first one was significantly enriched in progenitor-rich brain regions and the SOX2 positive organoid cell population. It was also enriched for DNA replication in gene ontology terms, and we therefore refer to it as the DNA replication module. The second, that we later called transcription regulation module, was enriched for GO terms relating to mRNA processing, chromatin binding, and RNA splicing. And finally, we also found a third one, the neural differentiation module, that was enriched for GO terms such as axonogenesis, generation of neurons, and cell morphogenesis. Given the well-documented cell type-specific roles of other transcriptional regulatory genes in neurodevelopment and disease, we reason there could still be interesting individual protein differences within the transcriptional regulation module across the profile regions and cell types. So we had 75 proteins in total in the transcriptional module, and out of the six potential candidates that we filter down, we end up having Rooveball, the candidate that is going to help us conduct the validation experiments. What was interesting was that although Rooveball 2 was significantly expressed in both our proteomic datasets, there was no differential expression among different brain regions and developmental time points using the Brainspan transcriptome dataset. To explore the potential function of Rupal2 during early neural development, we first validated its distribution in cerebral organoids. Indeed, immunofluorescence for Rupal2 and SOX2 on day 40 organoids confirmed co-expression largely restricted to the neural progenitor compartment. To expand our analysis, we used the commercially available inhibitor of Rufal2, CB6644. We treated 40-day-old organoids with CB6644 for 7 days. CB6644 treated organoids showed a significant decrease in total number of classic ventricular zone-like structures compared to controls. In addition, we observed substantial disorganization of the precursor compartment and a significant number of SOX2 positive cells being dispersed outside of the ventricle leg structures. A tunnel assay revealed that the displaced SOX2 positive cells were specifically undergoing apoptosis. When we tried to treat the organoids in earlier time points with the inhibitor, we observed the phenotypic impact of Rupal2 inhibition was accentuated. Together, this data suggests the important role of Rupal2 
in maintaining the site architectural integrity and viability of neural progenitors during organoid development. Then we saw to see genetic variants in RUPAL2 also led to specific neurological phenotypes in human subjects. Towards this, we leveraged datasets with patients affected by rare disorders that may include neurodevelopmental phenotypes and have undergone chromosome microarray analysis or exome genome sequences. Notably, no deletions affecting RUPAL2 coding sequence were observed in the population control copy number data, suggesting that there might be a potential role of RUPAL2 in human brain neurodevelopment. Together, we highlight a generalizable approach to study dynamic spatiotemporal changes in the post-transcriptional molecular landscape of developing cerebral organoids. This led to the nomination and characterization of a previously unappreciated protein in human neurobiology and disease. Generalization of this approach provides a promising system that could offer new insights into less accessible aspects of human brain biology including pathogenesis and treatment approaches for neurodevelopmental and neurological disorders. Our data are deposited in an accessible online data portal to allow interactive and real-time exploration and comparison of proteomic profiles within the cerebral organoids and human fetal brain tissue. I would like, would like to thank my colleagues and all the authors who made this paper come to life. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel. For more information about our paper, check the description below. Thank you.